So what makes for a good mid-range Chromebook? So today I'm going to try and help answer that by showing you this. It's my review of the HP X360 14B from 2021. Now this Chromebook sits somewhere in between the 14A and the 14C model that you may have already seen on the channel. If you haven't, check the video description for links. For now, let's take a look at the B. So I'll show you a bit of the unboxing here. I purchased it used, but it came with the original box. And apart from a few scratches on the unit, as was described in the advert, it actually looks like it's unused. So there were no battery cycles reported and everything else seems new. I paid about £123 for that. That's about $153. US Typically it retails a bit higher, but do check the links in the video description, see what you're able to pay for it today. It's got the Intel Pentium Silver N6000 processor from 2021 which I found great for battery life and performance and it also means it's got a long update life to Chrome OS so it's going to see updates all the way through to June 2029. Over on the left hand side you've got a full size USB A port, a USB C port for power and data, you've got the power button with a built in LED strip and then you've got a physical volume rocker beside that. And moving over onto the right hand side you've got a micro SD card slot, you've got a second USB C slot so you can charge it on either side of your desk and you've got a headphone jack. So I'll just show you a few more of those scratches that I mentioned. So on the bottom, the plastic bottom of the machine, as is the top, you can see some of them there. Notice there's no fans, grills on the bottom. It is a fanless machine. There's also no speakers on the bottom. They're on the keyboard deck. I'll show you in just a minute. And yeah, a few more scratches on the plastic lid as well. So no problems there. I wouldn't expect it to pick up scratches that easily. I don't really know what happened to this one, but for the price I paid, I didn't mind. Uh, weight wise, it's about 1.6 kilograms are about 3.9 pounds in the hand um, and then inside here we go you can see the keyboard deck you've got the speakers facing up BO branded might just be a bit of marketing hype really and you've got the keyboard itself um, i'll go into that in a bit more detail in a minute fairly shallow keys and the trackpad as well nothing too special but it feels good enough it's certainly usable and again i'll show you a bit more on that in just a minute so it has got a full HD touchscreen on this model. I wish it would go a little bit brighter, but no real complaints at this price point. And because it's an X360 model, it's fully convertible. So you can do things like this and put it into the temp mode. And of course you can continue that, put it all the way back and flip it into tablet mode, like I'm gonna show you here. And then the OS itself, Chrome OS, is gonna go into the tablet mode UI as well. So pretty nice to have the options. Uh, obviously a step up from the 14A and kind of matching some of that functionality that the 14c has let me give you an impression of what those upward facing bno speakers are like now so i'll play the outro from the 14a video that's linked in the description below i'll see you at the next one cheers The keyboard is okay, certainly closer to the 14A than the 14C. I don't know why they went for the small return key, that's a bit annoying, but you get used to it. And the keys are certainly very shallow and just don't seem to have much feedback. The trackpad is a decent size and again feels fine, very similar if not the same as the one in the 14A. The webcam is fine at this price point. It's a 0.9 megapixel camera. Here's an example photo and it's 720p for the video. And here's a video of the 14C that I mentioned. And if you do want to check out how that more premium Chromebook compares to this one, then definitely check out my review on it, which is linked here for you next. Cheers.